New Vision Christian Center. put a new song in my mouth, mm -hmm. even a praise unto the God. 
Many shall see it and fear. And it shall be trust in the Lord. 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. My word for the day is Lord, you have brought me from a mighty long way. See, my brothers and sisters, right now in this life today, we are faced with so much. The pastor was just talking about. We're faced with so much of going the goings on around the world, the wars, the destructions, Mother Nature has became angry. The oceans are furious. And death comes in so many, many ways these days. We find death, we call them freak accidents. Things that you would never think a person could die of, they're dying. So the world, we got to keep praying. I'm here to tell you that you have to keep your eyes on the Lord yes. and let him guide your steps because we believe we're worth saving. Yes. And he believed we're worth saving. John 3, John 16 and 33 said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in the world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. See, when we look at David and all that he has been through, the word said that I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. See, many of us know the situation with David. It's two parts of this message, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know. I I I I ain't gonna be playing long because we gotta go to dinner. Yeah, But uh, we know the things that David meant to him. When he's speaking of, he waited patiently. It, it's so it's, it's so amazing how we tend to forget about God when our emergencies arise in us we need him now <laughs> but he does not exactly say that when he first when he first said about the pit he described it as a pit of destruction and the mirey clay some think it was David's enemies while others think that it could have been physical illness or deep emotion of distress. And when you look at that, you got to wonder what David been through. Yeah. You know, for one thing, you know, he probably, you don't never know what was going inside of him. You know, he probably was dysfunction behind God wouldn't let him build his temple. You're right. You're right about it. He was hurting on that. Yeah. He might have been hurting because he betrayed Uriah by taking his wife Bathsheba okay. and had him killed. He could have been wondering about the things his son Absalom wanted to kill him. Even his king Saul, who he truly loved, hunted him down to kill him. So David was real troubled, very troubled. You know, sometimes it's almost like Paul did he have a thorn in his side, in his flesh. What was the problem here? See, we are not told, we are not told that we can relate to all of the trials of David's situation. And what it's saying there is that what we're not told what he went through is for us to realize the situation that we're going through that God is going to be there for us. Amen. But 
But we have to learn to wait and be patient. I believe we said that in Sunday school this morning. We have to be patient. See, how many of us are holding on to the situation that have been hindering you for so long? For years, and you can't seem to let it go. You might have lost a loved one. Your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your spouse, a child. Your health is bad. You lost your job, your friends have turned against you. Made cheating on you. Finance is bad. Come on, sir. There are so many overwhelming problems that we have that we have to deal with. And you just ask, Lord, what is it, Father? See, right now I'm talking about David. And I'm talking about us. I'm using him with us. You may be responsible for being in your own pit sometimes. Watch out, sir. Or you may be a victim of the sins of others. Yeah. See, sometimes we mislead other people and thinking we're doing the right thing. But we could be turning them the wrong way. Come on, sir. Right. See, we say we've been waiting, but we get in his way. <laughs> I had to think about that one. Because we sit back and we pray and we ask God for help. Where are you at, Lord? Where are you going to be? We ask him and ask him. But then again, like we were speaking earlier in Sunday school, we decide to do it ourselves. Lord, you're taking too long. I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. And all we do is mess up. But God is a wonderful and merciful God. He'll find a way to fix it for you in you. your mess ups yes. because you called upon him in the first place. Yes. So never think he don't know yes. what your problem is. Uh -huh. He's already knowing what's going on with you. He already sees what's going on with you. He already sees your heart. He already sees everything about you. Yes. See, after David waited, the Lord inclined into him. And once God inclined to David's cry. See, see, when you incline, what a powerful word, especially when it's coming from the Lord. All right, all right. See, incline means that he have heard you now. Yeah. I've heard your cry. Now I just stood up, now I'm going to stand with you. I, don't, I, I, I understand now. You waited, and you waited, and you waited, and you waited. Come on, come on, sir. But once he said, I incline, it's just like God said, here's my ear. Yeah. I'm with you now. See, David didn't have to worry no more, because he's already taken care of. Deliverance is on the way. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Then I'm not gonna be long. You're all right, You're all right sir. Go on. See, at that time, David had all of God's attention, and we know when God hears our cry, He gets busy and start working on our situation. Psalm 18 and 6 said, In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ear. He said, don't worry no more. See, when we don't even think of our, when we don't even think or understand why we are waiting so long, he already working it out for the good of those who love him. And have been called according to his purpose. Yeah. So that the horrible pit of Mary clay been sinking. And God reached down and pulled you out. Yeah. See, see, you have to understand. See, he was in a pit. Does that mean he was down? Mm. Father, what am I going to do? Mm. I'm holding on to this situation inside of me. Mm. 
that I can't let go. All the struggles is building up inside of me. What am I going to do for all these are things I can't, I have to let go. But I can't do it. This is the pit. And then in the pit, there's another problem. He's in the miry clay. He's sinking in the mud. He's sinking like quicksand. He's stuck. So it's real deep, Father. Help me. I can't go no farther. I can't help myself no more. I need you. I need you to come in and save me from myself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father said, don't worry no more. Don't worry. I've heard your cry. See, I'm going to take you out of the pit and I'm going to pull you out of the clay. And I'm going to set your feet on a rock and put a new song in your heart. See, what he said is that all the struggles, all the pain, all the situations that you're dealing with inside of you, I'm going to leave you that long. That song is over. I'm going to save you now. I'm going to put this new song in your heart. Hallelujah. See, see, we can't give up hope during our trials and tribulations. We have to be patient in the pit. We have to be patient when we down. We have to understand the ups and downs of life. Yeah. We got to go through it no matter what. He never promised us that we're going to have a, just a perfect life. Once we got saved, you know, it, it's almost like once you get saved, you think everything's going to be all right. But even though it is all right, because you have received God. You have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So in reality, it is going to be all right. But we have to turn it over to him. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We have to let him have his way. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 I have a new song in my heart. A new tune. In my mouth. Watch out. I have joy now. Yeah. Come on. I have peace. Come on. I have a clear mind. I'm not troubled no more. Come on now. You have showed me the way. You have gave me my answer. I have nothing to worry about no more. See how many how many of us can go back and think? about all the things that you've done and you hold it on to it and you can't let it go. You might have did something way back in the day. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. That you think, you know, you know, you sit back sometimes. I was sitting back the other day and I was speaking to someone. Now that was my sister-in-law, Debbie. And as we was talking, things came up. That you have forgotten. Yeah. Things that you don't even remember no more. And while we was talking, it was like, wow. Where did that come from? <laughs> when did that happen? You know, you lose track of time because so much things been done. You said, when did I have time to do that? Well, what time was that, Pastor? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, how old was I when I did that? You know, uh, but sometimes it's painful because everything you done went right. Many things I done went right. Come on now, it's all right. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And I heard my pastor say, <laughs> "My hit man." Yeah, yeah. Oh, I heard it, sir. I heard it. I heard it. I heard that hit man. 
Thank you, Pastor. We back, God. Thank you, 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 God. Wow. You just don't know sometimes. See, we talked about David. Now I got a story to tell. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. About me. Tell it. Tell it, brother. For God so loved the world yeah. Yeah, that's it right there. that he gave his only begotten son right. that whosoever believed in him yeah. should not perish. Uh -huh. I wanted to ask Miss Ella Asante yeah, yeah. Yeah. in the choir to sing that song. I thought I was worth saving. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, you know, last week when he sung that song, out of all these years that I heard this song, last week opened up to me. He said, I thought I was worth saving. And then I understood how much God loved me. Before I love myself. Yeah. See, he had already prepared a way for me. He's always been there for me. Can I tell you this? See, see, I hate to bring his name up sometimes because it hurts my father. But my brother Alvin. Yes, yes. Yeah. See, after his death, my life just changed. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, you didn't think about it then, but my life changed so much. And I had to go back and think about things. And you know, when God gave it to me, I was sitting in a cell. Well, it really wasn't the cell because in the federal penitentiary, it's like a room, you know, but you still had the four walls surrounding you. Yeah. And you had a locked door. I understand. But when you look back over and you think about it, how much God had done for you and you don't even know. Yeah. How much he then took you through Jackie. My friend. Yeah. My road oh, dog. Yeah. Oh, She's been Got there it. a very, very long time. Yeah. See, it's things that you don't know that she saved me wow. a wow. few wow. times wow. from myself. That's Sister Lewis. She was there with me. My God. Doing all our struggles. Doing all the time that we was in the street and in the world. Yeah. And where God has brought us from. Yeah, God. She was with me when we was in Washington. And I got robbed. And God wanted to kill me. She was there. She stopped me from making a mistake that I could have done. And she told me, don't do that, Jesse. Don't do that. It ain't right. My God. And you know, this is times we, we you know, we have no heart. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't have no heart. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even believe in love then. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what that's what yeah. What is love? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. yeah. You know? Yeah. Go ahead and tell it. To me it wasn't nothing but a four letter word. Come on now. My God. Something just to be said. You don't love him. You don't love her. You know, I love you. What? Come on now. It's like right now, my wife still wonders about certain things that I do because the manly part of me is still there. I don't have that, how you said, uh, affection that I should have. 
when it comes to my wife. I don't have that affection that I should have when it comes to the members of the church. I don't have that affection when I'm in sincerity I should have. But I try. But this is who I am. So, so, so I look back. No, I'm not. No, this is no, my story. Tell it. Tell it. Tell your story. Tell that story. Let's go. Tell it. It was 10 years in there. Yeah. Ten years in there before I went to prison. Yes, sir. No, while I was in prison. Ten years, it's put like this. My brother died in 79. So 79 to 89. I I was lost. Yeah. And was things that I was doing, I would have never thought. I had a job. I had a home, had a nice car. Yeah. I was living good. That's when I was working at Western Ford. Yes. Living good. My brother died and all hell broke loose. Yeah. The next year I was, didn't have no job. Wow. <laughs> Running the streets. They have nowhere to live. No, I always really had a place to live. I won't say that. But I did. I can say that God had always, you know, like I said, I had a motto in my mind to say, this is what I say, where love and all that stuff don't matter. In my my wildest dream, I said, if I was, had to live under a bridge, being homeless, I'd be fine. Yeah. Because all I had to worry about was me. Uh-huh. All right. I didn't have to worry about nobody else. Wow. It was just me. Wow. But let me tell you something. God said this to me. Out of them 10 years, he brought into my life when I got out of prison. And this is where that song came in at. I know you heard my testimony, but I understood what it mean now, missionary. He told me that there's nothing, in other words, he was saying there's nothing in this world that we live in no more. I want you, what he said, I've let you. I've let you. Understand, I've let you. Uh-huh. Understand, you've been through this. You've been through that. I watched over you during your course. I watched over you when you could have been killed. I watched over you when you got in that car wreck. I watched over you. There's nothing here no more. You was in prison for six years. I watched over you. I watched over you so good that where the the crypts and the blood washed over you. See what I'm saying? The game bangers washed over you. The game bangers honored you. Call me a G. You are a G. Uh-huh. And you know, when you get the Crips and the Blood, you know, at this time, they were gay, baby. Come on, yeah. Come on now. You know, they weren't friends. Yeah. But when it came to me, yeah. when it came to me, they were there. Yeah. We worked out together on the weight pile. Yeah. Crips and Bloods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Oh, when it came to me, over when I was in the room watching TV, they were there. That's his seat. You can't sit there. Jesse sits there. That's his movie. You can't watch that. That's Jesse's time. You know, 7 o'clock, I come out of my visiting room. 
I used to watch the Prayer of Man, I mean, Pray of Madness, in the X File. Yeah. That used to be my shows. Yeah. And when I come out of my business, because you know, I used to have a business like almost every week, thank the Lord. Yeah. When I was in El, I mean, in uh, Florence. Now in El Reno, my uncle came to see me. My wife, Evelyn, came to see me, my first wife. She came, but when I got here, I had a visit every week. Yeah. But you know, when I come off that visit, I could come in the room and my seat right. is always empty, it sits there. And if somebody sit in it, they had to get up. Yeah, wow. I didn't even have to say get up. <laughs> somebody else did it. See what I'm saying? Somebody else now. And I come in the room, they watching something else. You got to change the channel now. Pray, man, this is 7 o'clock. That's what Jesse watches. Yeah. You got to change the TV. God said, I've been there with you all the time. So this is God. But I didn't know. I wasn't thinking. I said to you many times before. I never, I never in my trouble, in my distress, yeah, yeah. whatever I was going through, I never cried out yeah. to God. Yeah. I never helped me, Lord. Mm. I need you, Lord. Yeah. I never cried out. But I didn't know. He was just sitting there waiting upon me. See, this is why sometimes your prayers is already answered. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have to get out there and pray. He already got something for you. Like David said, he waited patiently upon the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to wait patiently upon you. I let you do all you wanted to do. He said, it's my time. My time now. It's nothing. It's nothing here now. It's my time. I brought you through death. I thought it brought you through so many things. You know, Jackie, I know this is ugly to say, but so many women. You know it's a bad day when you go to prison and uh, you go up when you're in prison, you go up there talking about Father, help me, Lord. Please don't let me have anything. Yeah. Let my let my flesh, let my insides be pure. Oh, don't yeah. let me be the, the, the you know what I'm talking about? Oh, so much was going on at the time. I didn't catch that, Father, please. Yeah. We're for five years. My, my. Getting checked out. <laughs> <laughs> so many women this is why I love this woman Sister Lewis there was a time that I sit up and, 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 and I'm just telling this story back. is that okay tell it it is my testimony yeah. hey. hallelujah that's what's wrong with we don't testify no of what God has done for us. I ran across my friend one time and she said, Jesse, where are you living at? And I told her I'm living over here on Poplar Street. We were in Denver. And Jackie said, I'm going to come over. And she came to visit me. And I was in the house with three women. And she said, uh, which one are you? That's the way, Jesse. I said, Tell it, tell it. I said, Jack, yeah. All of them. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. All of them. I know, I know, I, 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 you know, it's true. 
But the thing about it is just like, they all had boyfriends, but I just bounced around. I was just like, how they said I was just a house boy. But see, when you grow up in this world, see God, see with me, see, see, women used to take care of me. That's how my life was. I tried to pimp, but that wasn't me. So I left that alone. Cause I wasn't a woman beater. I ain't have time to put my hands on a woman. And when I did try to do that, I told the brother, hey, this ain't for me. You can have her. Choose. Who do you want? That's on you. Which one of them you want? Cause I'm done. If I got to do that, I don't need you. So I want a woman be there. But Jackie came over there, and when she seen that, <laughs> she said, Jesse, <laughs> you got to get out of here. And I said, what? You know, I'm fine. You know? The next day, she came over there, packed my stuff up, and took me up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's my friend. Took me up out of there. Then we moved to Washington, and later on she was there in Washington with me. Now we just friends, you know. That's my friend. Yeah. You know, people might not understand. You, you remember Jack and we used to go to the club. We had the table full of women. And I'm the only man. Jesus! Jesus! People just come up and say, Can I dance with her? No, he, they'll come up and want to dance. They ask me because they said, You got to ask him. I said, Hey, that's on deal. They said, Nigga, you know you're pimping. No. I know it's funny. But you know, when you look at it, God has blessed you. See, he said he let me do everything that I wanted to do. So now that I've done that, now that I've gave my life to him, now he has saved me. Now I'm in my comfort zone. Now I'm happy. Now I'm glorified in the Lord because He first loved me. See, I didn't know then, but what I know now. See, now that He's waited up on me, now I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting up on Him because God is my deliverer. God. Because without him, where would I be? He has brought me from a mighty long way. He has brought me from the dust to the top. He has brought me out of a struggle. He has brought me out of my pit, out of my fire place. I'm not stuck no more. I don't have to be worried about anything no more. Because he is crying. Unto me, glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And when he put a new tool in my mouth, he told me, when I'm troubled, just call upon the name Jesus. And when I call upon Jesus, and I will always say, when I'm down, he Lonely, he's my comfort. When I'm weary, he's my rest. When I'm lost, he's my guide. When I'm in need, he's my help. And that's what I'm saying. Don't worry, don't worry. Give it up to the Let him worry. He said he won't leave you. He's going to be with you always. He's not a piece away God. He's a hog away God. We used to walk people home sometimes. And I walk you halfway.
Everyone, God bless you. Amen. Amen.